Nintendo has been a part of my life ever since I could remember. Some of my earliest gaming memories involve me playing my parents' older game consoles. While other kids were playing their newer Xboxes and Playstations, I was over here popping enemies in Bubble Bobble, continuously dying in Contra, and aimlessly wandering around the world of Legend of Zelda not knowing what the heck I am doing. It didn't matter what game I was playing, if I was having a good time, I didn't care. I could be kicking butt in Double Dragon, but at the same time find enjoyment in walking around the world map in Final Fantasy. My only focus was having fun, and Nintendo did a pretty good job at making that happen. But Nintendo also had this one thing, just, just this one thing, that completely took over my whole entire childhood. Well, uh, I think we all know what this one thing is. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's pretty obvious, but I, uh, I really like the Game Boy. Okay, alright, what can I say? I love me some Super Mario. Mario this, Mario that. Mario was, in fact, on the top spot of the pedestal of the gaming world of my childhood. Just like most kids in the 80s and 90s, I grew up playing Super Mario Bros. 1, Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World. Eventually I got a DS with Super Mario 64 DS, then eventually I got a Wii and so I played Mario Galaxy. Then I bought Super Mario 64 on Virtual Console, then I dabbled in Mario Sunshine. If Mario was on the cover, sign me up, cause I was sold. You put Mario in a cart, boom, sold. You give Mario a baseball bat, boom, sold. I couldn't help myself. Playing Mario was just so freaking fun. From his start in the 80s all the way up until now, Mario has captured the hearts of many and is not stopping anytime soon. Now up until the mid 90s, Mario was literally the king of the gaming industry. Sonic tried his best to dethrone him and yeah, he had a couple jabs here and there, but ultimately, Mario was just, uh, well, how do I put this lightly, too strong? This guy was the face of gaming itself. He was so big, they started putting this dude in everything they could. They made him a referee, made him a golfer, made him a freaking doctor, but they didn't even care at this point. Mario's momentum kept going and going. The NES trilogy sold millions. Super Mario Kart sold close to 10 million. Super Mario World was one of the best selling video games of all time. And in 1993, Nintendo decided to make one special game that, in my opinion, was fairly ambitious for its time. Say hello to Super Mario All-Stars, a compilation of four Mario adventures all packed into one single cartridge. Now back in the day, game compilations weren't anything new at the time. There were combo cards on the NES here and there, but nothing to this degree. Cause these weren't just ports, these were full on remasters. The power from the NES to the Super Nintendo was so huge they managed to cram four Mario games into one package. And not only that, but also update the visuals, sound, and add a couple new features. Mario All-Stars was pretty crazy, honestly. Four NES adventures fully remastered into one solid package, all valued as one game. Now, Remastering video games was mostly foreign in the 90s, so seeing something like this was probably a big surprise, I'm sure. After the success of the first compilation spawned a couple more entries to the All-Star series over the decades. So today, I decided to take a look at all three, starting with, of course, Super Mario All-Stars on the Super Nintendo. Oh man, this title ain't kidding. Talk about an all-star lineup. Three of the most iconic NES games remastered for the Super Nintendo. Oh, and Lost Levels. Mario All-Stars concept started after the release of Super Mario Kart back in 1992. The next mainline Mario game was still in early stages of production, causing Nintendo's release schedule to create a gap between their major game releases. However, Shigeru Miyamoto suggested to create a value game compilation containing all the previous mainline Marios up until that point. That includes the NES trilogy, Super Mario Bros. 1 through 3, and also the Japanese exclusive at the time, The Lost Levels. Nintendo saw this as an opportunity to let the American players experience Lost Levels that was claimed to be too hard back when it was released on the Famicom in Japan only. For most, this was the very first time experiencing the true sequel to Super Mario Bros. And probably their last, because it's not that good. Nonetheless, it was super cool seeing a Japanese exclusive make it into this full 4 Mario package. The whole idea of the compilation was genius. They had the core games already, they just needed to polish some assets, tweak a couple things, and boom, you got yourself one major release. And when it came to polishing, they weren't messing around. Presentation-wise, everything was reworked from the ground up. I'm talking sprites, colors, backgrounds, music. These games were more than just touch-ups. These games were poppin'. 
Gone were the limitations of the NES with its limited power and colors. When it came to developing on the Super Nintendo, there were no restrictions when it came to presenting itself. So, they went all out. Tons of bright colors, animated backgrounds, updated music. This gave Nintendo the opportunity to really showcase the true colorful world of the Mario universe. Now, while the presentation got a massive overhaul of changes, when it came to the gameplay, they tried their best to retain the original feel that they all had on the NES. This meant no alterations, no new mechanics or new levels. They tried their best to match the original games with the feel and physics of each one individually. And for the most part, I think they did a pretty good job at that, other than with Super Mario Bros. 1 and Lost Levels. These ones don't feel good whatsoever. For some reason, everything just feels really off. It's pretty obvious that time hasn't treated these two games that well specifically, but something about these two remasters in general does not feel right. But Mario Bros. 2 and 3 are good. Overall, these four games are the same iconic games you know and love from the NES, just with a fresh coat of new paint. Some have aged better than others, but the collection as a whole was and still is a great experience and will keep you busy for hours. And with the welcome addition of being able to save, you can pop in and start playing wherever you left off. This game was huge. It sold over 10 million copies over its lifespan, which is understandable. I mean, the value of this whole package is really good. Four classic games remastered and compiled into one game. And if you ask me, this is a must have to your Super Nintendo library. But let's fast forward a couple of decades later. The Nintendo Wii was released and Mario was on the verge of his 25th anniversary. So in 2010, Nintendo released Super Mario All-Stars 25th Anniversary Edition to celebrate 25 years of Mario's success to the gaming industry. I remember getting this bad boy for Christmas. It came in this fancy case with a history art booklet and a full-on soundtrack. It was a limited release, only selling around 2 million copies. As a kid, I had no knowledge of this. And this is what's left of my copy. What happened here? There are many things I would tell my past self, and one of them is take better care of your limited edition Mario game, you, you dummy. <laughs> but anyways, Super Mario All-Stars for the Wii. Now, you would think after decades later and with all the technology advancements, they would go all out on Mario's 25th anniversary, filling this collection to the brim with Mario games, right? <laughs> Wrong. It's literally this same game, but round. On the one hand, it's nice that the younger generation, like myself, got to experience these games in this form, but a fully retailed ROM? That's pretty brutal. Again, it was nice for me personally to experience these games as a kid because, I mean, like, this was the very first time I got to fully experience and beat Super Mario Bros. 2. And that became my favorite game out of the trilogy. But the fact that they straight up ripped the exact Super Nintendo ROM, put it on a disc, and called it a day was extremely lazy. It's almost like Nintendo forgot about Mario's anniversary and was like, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, remember Mario All-Stars? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, oh yeah, here's a Mario booklet, go fetch. As much as I think this was a lazy decision on Nintendo's part, I think it's a pretty sweet novelty item. The whole collection adapts really well with the Wii, and honestly, I think it's a pretty good fit for the console. I just wished they offered a little more in terms of content. I'm not kidding when I say this is the exact Super Nintendo game. I mean, they didn't even put effort into changing the UI or anything. Why couldn't they just add the portable Mario games, or maybe even some more obscure ones that not many people get a chance to play? This game was cool as a kid, but in reality, it was a lazy product in the end. It may just be a port of a Super Nintendo game, but at least it's a good one. I played this quite a bit back in the day. However, looking back on it now, I'm not entirely sure if it had enough bang for its buck. But now, let's fast forward a whole nother decade later. Mario is now 35 years old, the Nintendo Switch is breaking sales left and right, and to celebrate, Nintendo decided to put out this. Is this even real? <laughs> Here, let me just mess around in Photoshop for a couple of minutes. Oh, oh well, would you look at that. Super Mario 3D All-Stars, released on September 18th, 2020. If I'm being completely honest, I didn't think this would happen for a long time. Three of Nintendo's most popular games all compiled into one tiny cartridge. Why is the logo off-centered? Super Mario All-Stars was great, but this was the All-Stars we were all waiting for. Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. Three Nintendo Titans. 
And for some reason, they left out the fourth. Nintendo, where is Galaxy 2? Would it have killed you to add this one game that literally uses the same engine as Galaxy 1? The other Mario All-Stars had four games. There's no reason why Galaxy 2 shouldn't be on here. It's literally the only important 3D Mario game that's not on the Switch. Notice how I said important. My only guess to the reason why it's not on here is Maybe Nintendo thought it was too linear to be considered a true 3D Mario. It may not have a hub world, but does that give it a reason not to be on here? To me, the collection doesn't feel complete without Galaxy 2. Why would you take such an important piece to the puzzle? What a wasted opportunity. But okay, let's look on the bright side. Based on what we have here, it's a great package. I have a soft spot for most of these games. 64 and Galaxy I grew up playing while I dabbled in Sunshine but never beat it. For the amount of content you're getting, I think it has some great value. These games will keep you busy for hours. It's three great classics ported on the Switch which is also kind of disappointing. You see, in the original Super Mario All-Stars, they not only kept the original feel of each game, but they also remastered everything when it came to the presentation. It felt more special than just simple ports. But with 3D All-Stars, they're literally enhanced ports with little to no changes to anything. And the changes we did get are questionable to say the least. Camera controls are inverted from the original games. GameCube controllers aren't compatible to literally a GameCube game. And as for the visuals, well, they did make Sunshine widescreen, which is a nice touch. And Mario 64 has cleaner text now. That's cool, I guess. I get that these games have more assets to update and would be a bit harder to remaster compared to 2D platformers, but it would have been amazing seeing these games with a fresh coat of new paint. And don't get me wrong, these games don't look bad on this compilation. I think they did a very nice job enhancing the textures and making everything look clean. But I just can't help but imagine how these games would look with fully HD textures and models. I wish they would have given us at the very least an HD remaster of Mario 64. These games are great to play in higher resolution, but it just makes me think of the remasters we could have gotten. But the fact that these three games are in one package on the Switch with higher resolution is insane. But the fact that it's only available till March 31st is even more. I swear, Nintendo's slogan is becoming more and more like this. Trust me guys, it works. Why does Nintendo think this was a good idea? There is absolutely no reason why this game should have been a limited release. Limited, I felt like I was rapping, jeez. You're limiting sales, you're letting scalpers reign supreme. You are limiting customers to one of the biggest compilations in all of gaming, and for what? Nothing, that's right, nothing. Okay, but limiting a physical release is one thing, but digitally as well? I don't see anything positive out of this whole situation. To me, it seems like Nintendo is losing tons of future sales. I don't understand their mindset at all with this decision. As you can see, Super Mario 3D All-Stars is sort of a roller coaster of emotions for me. On the one hand, it's one of the biggest compilations ever. Three of Nintendo's most iconic and successful games all in one package. But some of the changes and decisions that were made with this thing is kind of unbelievable, honestly. The games that are on here are great, and I'm happy that we even got something like this. But again, it's a roller coaster of ups and downs. It's good, but also felt rushed in some cases. Even though the Mario All-Star franchise has had its ups and downs, it's honestly something special. They could have easily said no to make something like this from the very beginning, but instead they chose to bring all these iconic games into some great compilations with some great value. The Super Nintendo hit it out of the park with the full-on remasters. The Wii was a lazy ROM on a disc, but still has a soft spot in my book. And 3D All-Stars, while really, really good, had some weird design choices that were super questionable in my opinion. Over the years, Nintendo has liked to celebrate Mario's successful journey throughout his life, and Mario All-Stars as a whole does a good job at that, celebrating past experiences with new hardware. From back in 1993 all the way up to 2020, Nintendo has done a pretty good job at keeping this tradition alive, and I hope it doesn't stop anytime soon.